And this is how we welcome you to Artistic Spots, a show about art, talent, and entrepreneurship, where you are also the artist. In Artistic Spot, we're actors of our movies, singers of our musicals, and writers of our books. Today, we have a very special guest, and we are recording episode 107 from Fabo. And my name is Jose Rodriguez Marmol, and I'm your host. And today, we're joined by artist Jason Hunt. Hello. Nice to, nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Jason, for accepting our invitation and being part of our story in Artistic Spot. We're here in your studio mm -hmm. at Fabo, and so far, I'm so, so emotional and so honored to be right next to you, seeing oh, everything you. you have done, because your story dates back for almost 60 years. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about who Jason Hunt is mm -hmm. and how you started creating this masterpiece? The first time I did a professional show was in 1966. And then about a year later, I'd start doing it full time. And I worked a full time job. I still was doing this. And I quit for a period of about maybe five years. And I went back doing it again. And I started off as a painter. And I got tired of that. So I went to my first love, which is graphic drawing, which, which I do now. And I uh, met my beautiful wife, Mary Thompson Hunt over there in 1980. And we got married in 81. So we, we have our 40th. Wedding anniversary coming up December 20th. That's beautiful. And she's the, the light of my life. And it wouldn't be who I am without her. That's beautiful. That's yeah. amazing when you have a story and you have that significant other right next to you. Mm -hmm. Like walking with you in the pathway of life. Yeah, she's an, she's an actor. And uh, they say actress, but I, I agree with the term of calling a non gender because you ever hear of a teachress yeah. or a doctress? That's true. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You are as non-gender, so I like that. As for my work, I call my works moments in time, and I try to capture small and sometimes large moments that we can all relate to and things we have done and gestures we have seen and people that we love. And uh, some of my work I would describe as corny. My definition of something corny is so true it embarrasses you. Yeah. And it reminds you that you're vulnerable. And most people don't want to be reminded they're vulnerable. The vulnerable moments are the only way we can get to know each other truly. Because you have to drop the mask to connect with someone you love. And so many people forget that. Now, Jason, you have a very long story with your paintings and this beautiful mm -hmm. collection of mm -hmm. drawings. Yes. And so if you were able to choose one specific time in your life, in the past 60 years as an artist, which moment would you pick and why? I, I, that would be extremely difficult to pick one moment. It's like trying to pick what is the truth. There is no such thing as the truth. There's only individual truths that make the whole. So all the moments put together would define what I am what I do and what I do, but it was no turning point. There was a, a point where when I started drawing again about 19 years ago, and my wife thought I was crazy because she said, all you do is paint. What are you doing that for? It's not going to work. And I'm more successful with my drawings than I ever were with my paintings. And you work up to the moment where you try to achieve the good, good enough, and you stop. Too many people think, Perfection is what an artist is trying to, do, to reach. There is no such thing. Think of perfection as a, a direction. You go north, you never get to a north. You go south, you never get to south. It is simply a direction. If you don't have a direction, you're like a ship without a rudder, you drift all over the place. So having a direction and having a focus, and for me, my focus is mankind. We as humans, we are so complicated and yet we are so flawed. We're smart enough to make a bomb that, you know, could blow us up completely, but not com we're not smart enough to do it completely. We are equal to our uh, abilities to be cruel as we are to love. And I tried to show the gamut in between what I do is all about the shadows and the parts that we overlook. You mentioned something very interesting, which is individual truth. What's your individual truth? It constantly changes all, all the time. Something I might have held truth, you know, years ago has been proven shaky, untrue to me. The way you look at other people, 
you know, sexuality and things of that nature. At another point in your life, you might have thought differently. But now you see that people are people. And if you judge people, then you in turn are going to be judged. To be an open person and an open way of looking at life is to allow other people to be who they are. And I believe your personal strength stops at your fingertips. And if you start projecting your values like religious or whatever on somebody else, then that's highly flawed. You've overstepped the bounds of humanity. Humanity is to be accepting, not rejecting. You know, that's true. That's what, uh, you know, basically nature does. It tries something for a while, it doesn't work. The dinosaurs died out. They were too big, too cumbersome, and they died out. And if we, that could happen to us, the way we used to our own planet. And not to be a, uh, I hate when people use the expression, a uh, bleeding heart liberal. I think it would be correct to call a person a beating heart liberal. They're in touch with their humanity. And they say, it, it's all about me. And they know it isn't, it's all about us. And if you wasn't this us in the world, this world would not keep moving. And lucky enough, we have just enough intelligent people who are in touch with their humanity to fight off the darkness of this singularity of me, 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 instead of we. And I think that's happened in our country. That's true. Now, Jason, when you showcase your art and this beautiful and amazing masterpieces mm -hmm. that we can see around us, what do you want the audience to feel when they're standing right in front of one of them? What's the story that you would like to tell besides well, take, taking the moment and portraying moments in life? Well, it would be each individual. Each one is a window to another moment in time. And every time I look at one piece, even though it's another person, you can see that this person is an individual and this person matters. Or then you might see something that you find disturbing or something that's ugly. And the idea is to not look away. Too many people look for pretty pictures that are as unrealistic as, you know, some movies with everything wonderful and happiness in the end, which is, which is actually a very nice thing to do with movies. I agree with they should be like in the 1930s because life is so damn hard. Yes. And I don't call it escapism when people want a better sense of fair play and a better that these people lived happy in my work. I want them to come away saying I connected to this particular moment and it moves me. I have people look at some of my pieces and they start crying. And the piece is not particularly sad, but it touches them in a way that allows them to, for a moment, to take the mask down. And I think that's nice. If you look at a piece of art and feel nothing, then it has failed. Mm -hmm. You must feel something. And art is not all paper. Too many people see it as decorating a room. The room should decorate the art. It's true. Not the other way around. Now, Jason, before we went on air and started recording this episode, you were mentioning about the time it takes to do a small piece and then a bigger piece. Can you oh, tell us a little bit about the process well, and yeah, how the, long does it take? To well, the process is like doing anything. If you paint a room, it takes a long time to do it. If you want to paint a, a little square, about two, two inches square, it's done. And when you do a drawing, it's similar to that, but the technique with a drawing is a smaller one is think of it being something in the background or to the side, a very small area. So you can't be as precise when you do that. You must simply suggest, and you, but the drawing must be extremely tight to do graphic realism as I do. But it's still, as you get closer and closer, you can see the striations of the pencil. The larger piece, you don't see it so much because it's more spaced out. And you can't only look at that much of an image at one time. That's why the, the craziness in movies, when they have a screen like this, and our eyes can only see this. So the older movies are actually correct. And this, you gotta go like a tennis game. Mm -hmm. And you, we, we don't see, we only see this much. And also in the back of me, when you see me, most of the time, if it was an eye, it would be out of focus. And I tend to draw that way. I try to draw the way we see. But doing a smaller and larger piece, a uh, larger piece requires much more dedication to what I'm doing and keep perspective. And the smaller piece is basically is like cutting a, you know, cutting this, cutting, just working on a tiny area instead of a much larger area, which is, uh, you know, can be very complicated. It's true. It's much more time. I can do a small piece in an hour and a half, and a bigger piece can take as long as 
125 hours, like basically 35 hours to 125 hours for a larger piece. Do you have a piece that has been the favorite that you have done or maybe has like a more emotional connection than maybe other pieces? Oh, I've had pieces where I find them to speak like the piece with the young boy with the water over there. That's in Virginia in a place they never had running water. They had to go down to a well. And uh, that's the first time that they had a group of people got together and they had running pipes to everybody's home. And the first time he, he had water coming out of a faucet in his life wow. and it's not even inside the house and i think moments like that in our country as extremely successful as our country country is it shocks the mind there are so many parts of the country that are still underprivileged and people still have dirt roads and people don't have they have outhouses yes. and the richest country in the world that's kind of insanity yes. you know other countries don't allow that and even like France and places like that, they have full, you can go to college in France. And they say, well, why do you not have the people's pay to go to college? Because we want educated people. And why should the, what they give back and the taxes offsets any money that we would get from them to go to a college. If we did the same thing here, we'd have a much brighter and stronger country. We just charge through the nose. Do you think that your art work and your artistry is a way to pay back? It can be, but uh, I kind of speak my mind and I get married. My wife thinks I get myself in trouble because I, I, I don't want to be liked. I want to be understood. That's much more important to me than being liked. If you know where I'm coming from, fine. If you don't like it, don't listen. You want to see my work, don't look at it. And uh, I say, I, do, I use controversial pieces sometimes if I'm strongly, you know, feeling something about a situation. I, I detest intolerance and I detest bigotry and I detest greed. And we're, this country is like we worship it. We talk about the idea of the most, you've heard of the, most, the beautiful people in the 1960s and 70s. You know why were they called the, why they were called the beautiful people? No, I do not. Because they were super rich. That's it. They had money and therefore they're beautiful. Uh, what a more bizarre way of expressing rather than the artistic and the talented people as beautiful and just the rich. So I kind of fight against that in a way. And uh, what I try to show in my work, hopefully, is the humanity of what we should be. The way Norman Rockwell did his artwork and people said, you know, Norman, uh, his work is unrealistic and it's corny. He said, I'm not painting the America the way it is. I'm painting it the way I wish it was. You know, and I think that's nice that he, he was willing to do that and, and take the uh, the arrows of him you know, being a, a hack. And he's one of the most successful hacks we ever had in this country. So he's a remarkable man. Now, Jason, speaking about your collection, Moments in Time and Drawings of Life, how do you celebrate life nowadays? Oh, the idea of uh, the, every day that you're alive, you wake up, you look at someone you love, you do the things you love, you do them every day. And then people constantly talk about the new, the new this, the new that. New doesn't mean anything is better. We often think new means better. It does not. I can put a turnip on my head. Oh, look what he's wearing, a turnip instead of a hat. That's so new, that's ridiculous. We tend to do that instead of saying the improvement, the betterment of life, to be a better human being. That's my goal every day. I, I constantly read. I constantly try to gain knowledge. And I constantly keep my feet on the ground. And people praise you sometimes and think you're this and that. And there's a, a Hindu expression is that when you meet success and, and loss, they're both imposters because they're only temporary. Any success you have is temporary. Think of scoring a, scoring a touchdown. Wonderful thing, that's temporary. You won something, wonderful thing, it's temporary. You eat, best meal you ever had in your life. Wonderful thing, temporary, move on. And that, that's like time in a sense, it only moves in one direction, forward. So what I try to do is capture the moments when we do move forward, these moments aren't forgotten 
when people had a sense of fellowship and racial equality and sexual equality and inequality between the have and have nots. Uh, those are the links I try to do in my work. Hopefully I can speak to anyone. That's no one's for, no one should be forgotten. Yes, that's a beautiful message. Now, Jason, you've been doing this for such a long period of time. Yes. We're talking about 60 years. What's next for you? What do you have in mind? Do you have something on your bucket list that you would like to do that you haven't done? No. So, no, 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 no. I was just talking. I don't believe in the bucket list. Whatever I've done, I've done. I can't see myself on that bed, that in my deathbed. Oh, I've never seen Paris. Wham, wham, wham. Uh, no, I do. I didn't do what I did, and I'm happy with that. If I have an idea, I might want to do something, but it's not crucial to who and what I want to do. Whatever I'm wanting to do, I'm doing it now. I have the freedom to get up every day and go to my studio and do exactly what I want. I owe nothing to anyone. I have no schedule. I have no time. And how many people would have a life where they would do something? with the prospect that you have no idea that somebody is going to even want what you're doing. And that's what artists do every day. Out of all the artists in this country or in the world, only five to 8% are actually making a living off their art. And they're some of the best artists in the history of the world. Uh, Vincent van Gogh never sold a painting in his life. His brother bought one piece and put it in a closet. And it took years later after he died, the people say how wonderful he was. And there are many artists who are falling in that category, who are contemporaries right now. And the idea that they were trying to achieve, they just wanted to be accepted. You know, say, please buy this. It's, a, it's, it's also a living. I'm not a starving artist type. I'll dig a ditch before I sit there and starve like a fool. But you have to be realistic, but you have to see it as a job. But it's also a calling. Being an artist or an actor like my wife is, or anyone in a theatrical part, even what you do, you do it because you have to. And you do it sometimes against your own will. So I could be making a lot more money than doing this nonsense. But you say, it's part of who I am. That's true. You know, I think that's what it is truly a calling to do this. And the sacrifice you make is you probably won't make a lot of money. You might become famous, but after you're dead, then who cares? I don't care. True. You know, I'm making make my money in my lifetime. You know? That's true and that's beautiful. Now I'm speaking about purpose and being remembered. What's your purpose in life and how do you want to be remembered by the audience and the people that get to have these beautiful masterpieces in their homes and they can't get to come to the studio, Studio 151 here at Favo, and look at the beautiful pieces you have on the walls? How do you want to be remembered and what is the purpose in life? <sighs> I think this going to the purpose of life. The purpose of life, I think, is one thing, and that's the rapture of being alive. What is the world about? It's all about you. Not you. About you. The universe. Everything expands out you. There are houses next to you that you've never spoken to these people, and yet they're living their lives. And you're driving down a highway. Thousands of homes, individual stories are being told, we will never know. So the only thing you can do is live your life to the fullest and do all the things you wish to do and don't regret anything you didn't do because you can only do what you do. You know, the idea you can't have what you don't have. So my purpose in life is to uh, live it to the fullest until I'm no longer here. Memory of that when I'm gone, uh, if my wife is still alive, I would have to be proud of who I was and what I did. I don't, I don't care about being considered great or anything. I just want to be uh, understood. And, and uh, he was competent. He was a good, competent artist. He did what he did well. And I have no qualms about thinking, uh, oh, what a great guy he was, what a great man he was. Because you ever notice when people die, the rottenest person you ever met, wasn't he a wonderful man? And most the insanity, you know, that... Uh, People tell ridiculous stories about people who were not very nice. Sure. And uh, yeah, I do what I do. There's a famous story, the joke, I can tell it very quickly about the time. This man died, and he's the meanest man in town, and nobody liked him. Nobody. So no one, the minister says, well, I'm someone saying nice, something nice about this, Miss Johnson. And no one said anything. He said, that's it, lock the doors. There for three days, brought in food, nobody said nothing nice. 
And finally, an old man in the back put his hands up. He said, finally, say something. Well, he had a brother, and he was worse than he was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the nicest thing he could say about the guy. Wow. You know, it's all perspective and how you look at things. And we should do everything to the level of every day and the best we can do as a human being and try to be honest and have integrity, live by your word, and, you know, don't be greedy. If you have enough, you're fine. How much how many millions do you need? You know, how many billions do you need? It's an absurdity. And to, to fulfill yourself is your needs are taken care of. You have people who love you, respect you. I think that's enough. It's beautiful. Jason, you have said beautiful things in our conversation today. But Thank I you. want you to take a few minutes and talk to our audience that are looking to us and watching our episode and listening to this episode everywhere podcasts yeah. are available. What will you tell them and why? Are we talking about art in general or life? It's up to you, whatever comes from your heart. Well, they go hand in hand because the artist creates the art and the art comes from the artist. Uh, the artist is the flower and the aroma is the art. That's why it's such a nebulous thing and it doesn't mean the same thing to everybody. You might smell the flower and not like it at all. Sure. And someone say this is amazing. But I think in art and life is to strive to do your best. There's an old saying and from a... Uh, a old the country song that says, when the fruits of your labor are worth more than your pay, I don't care how much you're getting paid, you do it the best you can. I don't care how much I think I might receive for what I'm doing, I do it the best I can. To always strive to do your utmost, to be honest to yourself, to respect the rights of others, to work as hard as you can, to work as hard as you can for your country without being a flag waver, which I don't like. I think it's important to be a good citizen of the world. And that means to respect other nationalities, other beliefs, other races, other people with different sexuality, other people's b religious belief, as long as it's not dogmatic. I don't really like religions. I've looked down on other religions, like their religion is the king religion. And they're all fairy tales, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not putting religion down, but I'm simply saying you have to put it in perspective. If your religion does not serve you, if you become a servant or a servitude to the religion, I think you've lost the idea of what even Jesus was talking about. Religion should free you and comfort you, not frighten you to death. Our government's the same way they shouldn't frighten you to death. And we are the government in this country, and we don't even realize the politicians simply represent us. And the quality of the politicians we get, that's what we get because we voted for them. It's important that we always seek to be better than we were yesterday and that's all we can do that's true thank you jason thank you for being part of our story it's my we're, pleasure we're honored to have i'm honored like to be you here as part of artistic spot before we leave where can people follow you do you have a website on arts.net that's where you can reach me and awesome. come to fable as well as too because there are a lot of amazing artists here Yes, we're so grateful to have you. Well, thank you. I've thank been, you, Jason. It's absolute been an honor. honor. Same up, I didn't ramble. I we're honored. No, you're no, wonderful. Well, well, thank, thank you very much. I okay. appreciate it. And for those of you, our audience, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, RJJ Design, also on Facebook, JJ Arts and Design. Subscribe to our YouTube channel under Artistic Spot. And of course, don't forget to tune us back next week for episode 108 of Artistic Spot, where you are also the artist. Mm -hmm.